What's going on, world? Welcome to another episode of the Walker Review. It's your boy B Walk, and I am here with another special guest here at Geek League. Shout out to my boy Danny Martin. Shout out, Dan. Yes, sir. But we have here a man who is on a mission to connect our youths, even adults, with mentors. Because I mean, I don't know if you guys have grown up with a mentor, whether it could have been your mother, a father, a grandparent. But we understand the pivotal parts that are. Mentors play in our lives, so we have a man that's really trying to really bring something to the city, but also help our youth continue to move forward. Mr. David Reeves. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's going on, sir? Appreciate you coming on the Walker Review. Man, appreciate you having me, my yes, brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So it's an yeah. honor. It's an honor, man. I salute to the work that you're doing out here, man, because you're telling the stories that people really want to hear and the real, the truth out here and you're highlighting the people that need to be highlighted. So. It's just a blessing, man, because to be honest, to be able to walk in your purpose and walk in your passion is every way. Honestly, I want everybody to be able to feel because it's a definitely fulfilling feeling. Absolutely. But you brand awesome. yourself as the mentor connector. Yes, sir. Uh, we're going to get into a little bit about not only how you got into actually branding yourself that, but just a little bit of background story about who were some mentors in your life and really how you okay. got the position you are now. But to start off the interview, kind of tell us a little bit about some background history. Like, tell us who David Reeves is. That's a good question, man. That's a real good question. So, uh, quick background, David Reeves, uh, born and raised in Dallas, Texas. So, definitely proud. Uh, <clears throat> well, I, should I talk about the Cowboys? No, we don't. We I mean, you can, but at the same time, it ain't gonna go that far. I, I we already know. know. <laughs> Shout out to Cowboys. We good, we good. Yeah, we we won't we won't take no tangents, oh, man. Hurt. All hurt love, too. all love. Um, but yeah, man. Uh, my background, I was um, man. I'm a crack baby, man. That's that's where I start off, man. That's my uh, dad was. He had me in the front seat of his car, eight months old, and he was still out there. So he was had his crack pipe, had his a bottle of alcohol and uh, looked down at me. I looked back up at him. I was like, man, what you doing? <laughs> and he said at that moment, he realized, you know, he had some choices to make, some decisions. Now he had a newborn son. Right. Really didn't think he could be a father. He thought he was stereo from the military or whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, so having me kind of shifted his life around. But he realized he needed to get clean and sober or else he was going to be like his dad who was not in his life. Right. And so from that point forward, he said he still, you know, hit the crack pipe and drunk, drunk a little beer and whatnot. But a few months later, he went in uh, to Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous Recovery Program. And uh, he's been there since. And for me, I know that is what changed my life because I grew up in that environment. Mm -hmm. That was my first church home. Um, and so my first mentors were all recovering addicts, alcoholics, ex crackheads, dope fiends, the, the drug dealers, mm -hmm. the gangsters and the pimps and the and the prostitutes, all the same time, the murderers, thieves, all that. And so I heard those stories growing up. Right. And as a you can imagine as a kid hearing these stories, what you see on TV and in the movies, mm -hmm. But you know these people, you're like, man, this is this is crazy. That sounds like it don't even really happen. And then you go out in the hood and you see this is really happening. Yeah. And exactly how they said it went down, it happens to somebody else you know. Or you go out and try to think it might be a little different for me. You know? Right. Same results. So basically I was literally seeing people lose their, their cars, their homes their families and sometimes their lives to drugs and alcohol mm -hmm. and other bad decisions. So I learned so much about success from people who made all the mistakes first. Mm -hmm. And then I got to meet people who were seen by society as successful, whether they're millionaires, billionaires or whatnot, just societal standards of what success looks like. And I actually, still didn't learn as much from them as I did from those my original mentors who 
and was seen as outcasts or the people that messed up by society. Right. And they've been locked up, shot up, and all the rest of that. So that was my that was my um, my foundation. Okay. And and from there, <clears throat> even growing up in that environment, uh, solid foundation came from my first mentorship experience. Aside from hearing stories, was actually mentoring in martial arts. Right. Which at age seven, my dad and I started martial arts together after I'd been molested, um, and my pops just really didn't know how to address that situation with me. Right. And it was by a 15 year old boy who come find out was kind of off, special ed wise, but nonetheless, he knew what he was doing. Yeah. And my pops didn't know how to have a conversation with your son. Like I, yeah, I because imagine. I mean, I know for a fact you hear a lot of conversations when it comes down to just just general from molestation to homosexuality, they come to yeah. fathers and they always present the question of how would you feel if your son was this or that and how would you approach it? Yeah, and man. we have a lot of different answers from men who really would never think that that would happen to their son would happen to even have that conversation. Yeah, no. So, I mean, I can just look at myself and just try to even come and hear how would I would react during those kind of situations. And it kind of still blows my mind. Yeah, man. And it's how do you handle that from the standpoint of wanting to protect your children? Exactly. And then also, how do you deal with that from the standpoint of, man, I'm, I, I'm a man. Because the thing is, it's easy for a man to answer that when it's his daughter. Because you've had a lot of adults in this last few weeks look at the surviving R. Kelly, oh, yeah, and R. Kelly. they already have their own, their own perception on how they would have handled things yeah. if that was their daughter. But Absolutely. then again, when the roles are reversed and it's their son, because yeah, as boys, we're looked at as different yeah. in a way. I mean, yeah. it's just natural yeah. upbringing, you natural science. Like, you don't ever expect that to be a conversation you have with your son. Right. And it kind of puts a lot of uh, adult men in shock. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Absolutely. So it's like, how do you handle? Yeah. What do you say? Mm -hmm. And and from from that pain, I actually birthed one of the greatest um, bonds in my life with my dad. That was when he introduced me to uh, perseverance. Gotcha. Because he said, "All right, so if you want to do this martial arts thing, you not only gonna have to you know make your mom happy by maintaining straight A's." Mm -hmm. But you gotta sign this contract. It was just a little notebook, piece of paper, pencil. Gotcha. I said sign on the line right there. I mean, you you can't quit martial arts until you are 18. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, okay, all right. And even at that point in time, because now that's something that you hold dear to you, just that simply simple notebook contract that you signed what? with the word perseverance. What does that mean to you now? Oh man, and I haven't quit anything since. Gotcha. So and literally we were. We became it when I turned 10, after three years going hard in the form, we were the first father and son in the state of Texas to earn our black belts together. Because wow. he hated that about himself, that he always quit everything he started. And his parents didn't show up to his games or whatnot. So he didn't have anybody pushing him to keep going. So he joined to motivate me, but at the same time, it was the first thing that he didn't quit on. And we got, he, he had started martial arts in his Air Force career back in his 20s, but he quit on that. And he wanted to finish, he wanted to get his black belt. Mm -hmm. So it just, it changed his life, changed my life as well. And now we got our second degrees together when I was uh, 12 and then third degree when I was 15. So it just made a whole trajectory, but martial arts taught me that discipline, that confidence. It, it taught me how to fight so I could avoid fights. Gotcha. And those all these lessons even uh yes sir no sir yes ma'am no ma'am that respect when i went into the military i was fresh out of college 22 leading troops that were twice my age and they were calling me sir mm -hmm. and whereas most of my peers were like man that just feels weird doesn't it feel weird to you i'm like no nah, actually when i got my black belt at 10 or well, before then i was calling people sir and ma'am and they were calling me sir and ma'am like it was nothing regardless of age and that's crazy that's one thing that i see that we both share uh, i was always raised in a household not just simply off of just respecting your elders yes, but sir. just the understanding of how much respect oh. can get you further yes, sir. i grew up in a house full was respect can either get you love or respect can get you killed yeah. so i mean i've always been in a position regardless of what age you are yeah. Like you're a sir or a man to me. Not just simply trying to cut clear fly you as be old, but just simply yeah. I respect, respect you and I want it to be known right off the bat so yeah, there's absolutely. no discretion going on. Absolutely. And I see that in the 
the mentorship work that we both do. Yes, sir. Even working with the students, mm -hmm. oftentimes, you know, like, yes, ma'am. Let me give them a plug. Shout out to Education, Education Freedom. Freedom. It's, Freedom. It's, the, it's the nonprofit organization that we work for serving sir. our students. So, College of Career Readiness. So, yes, I'm sir. Shout out. Plug, plug. That's the <laughs> connection out here doing the real work, man. Real not, work. Not getting enough credit. And we're in these unserved communities with mm -hmm. kids that look like us or, or minorities in general who aren't really getting help. Man. Exactly. They're not getting the help they deserve. Or they they get people who are trying to help who can't really relate to exactly. them. Exactly, and it's a lot of different barriers that they go through because they deal with trust issues. They deal with just being alone, yeah. being honestly sixteen, but already feeling twenty five because Absolutely. of the responsibility factor that's been yeah. put on you. Just getting showing up to school, right? right. And you, yeah. honestly, that's a full time job for them because they may work already full time jobs outside of school. Yeah. Where I mean, I always tell my students, I commend them because. For you to really deal with the environment that you're in, whether it's the cultural climate that we're in, whether it's the mm -hmm. governmental climate, whether it's the school system. Oh, yeah. Because, I mean, I can even see from my time being in high school, school systems have changed yeah, yeah, in just yeah. overall usage of what school usually is. Thanks. But I want to go into detail a little bit about something with you. Uh, I know you served in the military. Yes, sir. You've actually, what branch? Air Force. Yes, sir. How long did you serve? Three and a half years. Okay. And you're also a proud member of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity yes, Incorporated. Yes, sir. Root to the good brother. Root to them. Shout out to my brothers, Zap Phi Alpha. But Respect. what is the actual time where you saw that your mentorship to somebody would actually play a pivotal in their life and you actually begin to see the ball moving in their head to when they, when, when they wanted to achieve something better than what they actually came across? Man, that's a good question, man. And uh, honestly, it takes me so long to answer this question. Every time I get it, because I always think of so many different. I got you. I know it's a lot. Of, it's a lot of little stories yeah, that can lead man. to a big story. Absolutely, man. Um, and I, I remember connecting with a young brother uh, at Lincoln High School. Shout out, there's shout out to Lincoln Tigers. And um, it was actually I connected with him. With a TJ the DJ. Yes, sir. Shout out TJ. Shout out TJ. Joe T. Dallas. Samuel Alum. Samuel Alum. Uh, Spartan. Yeah, man. And so I see getting a uh, mentor, TJ, who's a college student, mm -hmm. and then he's mentoring a high school student is what I'm all about, reaching back. Because at every level, I was mentoring since elementary, mm -hmm. and I actually got to put it into practice and see my mentorship of a college student be effective in the life of a high school student so so it, and at the same time i was mentoring a high school student too but what a lot of mentors don't understand is you learn more and oftentimes receive more from the mentorship you give mm -hmm. you get more from the mentees and they then you give to them really right and so uh this young brother really opened my eyes because uh, he had a vision he had a dream um, and at the time I was serving the homeless every other Saturday so I was working close to the nonprofit. I was telling him about it and he was really loving the idea and said he wanted to do something similar mm -hmm. and so excited I was like well what's holding you back what's stopping me he's like well, I haven't seen anybody else do it yet I was like I mean it can't be done he's like yeah but I, it's so different I was like well what is it and he said you know people serve the homeless right and that's good and everything but when I go home I said I got my little brothers and sisters and I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to put some food in this empty fridge right. for them. Mm -hmm. So who's serving us when we in the hood? Yeah. And he said, I want to have a food truck that goes around to hoods like mine and delivers food mm -hmm. to those in the home, but still hungry. Yeah. Still ain't got no food. So. When he said that, man, it, it changed my perspective on a lot of things. Like we talking about even just making it to school or how kids don't even look forward to going home. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, we connected him with a brother who had a food truck. Yeah. And so his vision became reality. Mm -hmm. And it, and seeing that, I got a lot of little stories like that. Mm -hmm. But that, that shifted my frame of mind at the same time as changing his life. So, yeah, that's one of the one of my most proud to. And I can ultimately think you can agree that just even with those little stories, as many as they may be, just seeing 
them, I'm, cause to be honest, just hearing that story, him being able to really, during all his struggles, be able to really think of something that could bring him out of the struggle with being other up, people, being up that can the create some type of inspiration. Yeah. Because you can understand when you are dealing with issue after issue after issue, it's easy mm -hmm. for you to get into a negative mindset, mm -hmm. a negative oh, yeah. spirit, and you just really not just think of ways up. out and think of really ways just to settle yeah. and deal. Think of ways to tap out. Yeah. And give up. And for him to even just even think of that had that mindset to really what can happen what can I think of to, even though it was just spirit fronted, but yeah. just to even create the idea in your mind that this is what my community